My name's Miles Morales. I'm Brooklyn's one and only Spider-Man. And things are going great. He's gonna be here any minute. It should be simple enough. Give me your money. So are you like a cow or a Dalmatian? Ah, Spider-Man! Uh -oh. I am the spot. <laughs> it's not funny. Don't, don't do that. When you're following up a super successful movie, the first one is so influential, so beloved, and, and means so much to so many people. Were you ever tempted, and be honest with me, you can be honest with me, did you ever go into a regular cinema with fans and watch it again? Like, to see the reaction? Because I sure as hell would. I I have, but I'm 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 embarrassed now because no, fuck yeah, because you why am I doing it like <laughs> yeah, I want to. I think there's nothing like being there and seeing how it's how it's affecting and resonating with people in the moment. Like that's so cool, and it's also like what we've spent four years working on. It's like finally in the hands of everyone that we've been wanting to give it to. So I think that's pretty cool. That's exactly the psyche. I just wanted to hear the interactions. <laughs> I want to remind you guys of a great comment beneath the first teaser trailer for this movie, which reads, The most relatable part of Miles Morales is that he's still listening to the Spider-Verse 1 soundtrack all these years later. <laughs> <laughs> which is, mwah, chef's kiss. <laughs> uh, Jake, I've got a question for you. Have you ever been voice recognized off the back of the first movie? Uh, it started happening quite a bit. Like there'll be times if I go out and I used to wear, if I wear sunglasses, people don't know me uh, as an actor. I think this part of me looks like a lot of people. Like if you wore sunglasses, you might, we might have may look very similar. And you flatter me. Yeah, I realized I would be in line places and I would be, you know, just ordering. And it was the first time where people would go like, do I know you? And I'm like, ooh, it's the voice from the movie. You've just seen Spider-Man, haven't you? Were there big moments in that first movie that have stuck with you that you look back on and go, that was really cool. I'm so glad we pulled that off. I, I really like the moment where he takes that first leap of faith, you know. What's up, danger? <laughs> <laughs> Chills. That's all it is, Miles. A leap of faith. Like, what's up, danger? Like, what's up, danger? What have been the improvements in visual thwipping technology in the past five years since the previous film came out? Because it seems to me like you are reaching for every single new fantastic trick in, in, in the arsenal. What are you proudest of bringing to the screen for this second film in terms of visual development? Well, I, I will, when you're bringing up thwipping, I will say there is something amazing, which is that the sound department have crafted different thwips for all of the main characters. <laughs> this day is any damn winner? Oh, I guess it can. And, and so when you see Hobie Brown, his thwip is a guitar. <laughs> and that, in fact, Miles' thwip has been updated since the last film to sound more mature. <laughs> I love you guys, this makes me so happy. The level of perfection that you get from your three directors here and Lord and Miller, it's just another level. I was talking to Phil and Chris and they were saying that each individual spider person, spider being, spider robot, has their own thwip noise. Like it has its own level of detail there. Do you have other examples of when the whole gang have gone beyond nerdy and said, well, actually, that's a reference to something obscure. Uh, there are so many, I, I, so many of those moments. Um, I feel like we both feel and know that they, they wrote this with the day one Spider-Man fans in mind. Very intentional. Um, way back as far as, you know, I mean, as far back as it can go, they're pulling from, from anything and everything they can. And, and those details are in there. Um, you might not catch them all until you see the film, like at least what seven five times. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> exactly. At least. Um, but it's incredible to see how 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 passionate they are also and, and the energy that they have and they bring to this. It's it's so infectious and I know the fans will feel it. I don't think there's been better casting. It, the whole movie is outrageous. Jake is so perfectly chosen. You two, it's just amazing. But getting Daniel from Camden to play Spider Punk. Yeah. Insane. Beyond. How did the character get pitched to you? 
how did it appear in your inbox? Was there artwork already? Um, now they mentioned that uh, Spider, they want, they were interested in me for Spider Punk, and then I, I sat down with them and they showed me the artwork. They showed me all the stuff, and they said it was from Camden. I'm like, this is literally a dream. Because I've been told that he's sort of a mixture between Iggy Pop, Bad Brains, Spider Man, and apparently lives in a canal boat. How much more Camden can you get? Let's just... Yeah, yeah, it's the most Camden you can get. I'm not going to go into any more Camden details with fear of offending people. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, well played, well played. Um, are there particular lines from being in the booth that stick out to you that you remember from the recording? Because to me, this has obviously been written by some incredibly talented Americans, but did you sort of come in and triple check some of their Britishisms? Yeah, they, they did their research. I think it's just they got someone to kind of write some lines, but then I just kind of re kind of, you know what I mean? Just kind of did some work on it. Do you know what I mean? Like, but like, that's what, like, Kemp spent a lot of time doing it. He did one night in Miami at the Don Mar, and uh, with like some actually friends of mine that were in the play. And um, he was just obsessed about London slang. And so he went, like, Daniel, bring everything, bring everything you can to it. What about working with your co star, Mayday? He said somewhat sarcastically, like, how, how does that work? Like, <laughs> are you just sort of talking to yourself? <laughs> you know, I, I worked with the greatest child actor, voice, voice, child voice ever actor in the world, just making the great, the way she gurgles at times and laughs. Mayday! You have a baby? I have a baby. <laughs> no, I was alone on that, you know? So it was a lot of, it'd be Camp and Phil and, you know, some of our other, like the team would be on a Zoom. And I would be in a little booth talking to a fake baby and with the hope of they're saying it's working. You've lost it. No, I think it was just Kemp doing the uh, fake girl. <laughs> yeah, Kemp does. I don't need it. Yeah. Well, but actually, I'm going to make fake breaking news. Uh, Kemp does all the baby voices. So <laughs> I said fake breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> that was my fake acting. The music in these films is outrageous. Even in the trailer, there's like some swan honking scratched into the theme music. It's absolutely crazy. There's bubbles now. Hold on. <laughs> but I was wondering, for you, what would you say is the best use of music or a song in a TV show or a movie that you've appeared in? Obviously, Sikaliza from Get Out jumps out. But what else to your mind? It's a great song used in something you've been in. Actually, the thing that came to mind was like Black Mirror, you know? Like, mm. there was a, a score when they were like in the montage, when they were kind of, and I think it's from Moon. I want to say that it was it was a score. Maybe that's why I loved it, because I love the, the film Moon, you know, the Sam Rockwell film? It's so good. It's such a cult classic. I love it. I may be wrong there. Please, like, fact check me. Maybe Black Panther has a half decent soundtrack, like, maybe. Like, you know, it was amazing. You know, the trailer that never came out, the trailer that never mm -hmm. came out, the one we showed at Comic Con. Um, the one we showed at Comic Con, I, I never, no one's ever seen it, but we saw it when we was there. And that, that the music in that was incredible. I think they played Kendrick DNA. That was incredible. I think everyone just went, well, went crazy for that. I mean, the correct answer, really, now I think about it, is Posh Kenneth's rap from Skins. That's the best use of music. Yeah, I mean, you, you know it, I know it. <laughs> As a head of my time, head of my time. <laughs> It'll be back, he'll be back. There's a line, Shamik, that's really stuck with me and with a lot of people, it's even in the trailer. And it's, wherever you go, you have to take care of that little boy for me. Make sure he never forgets where he came from and never doubts that he is loved. Just everybody stop crying because it's too much. Did you ever properly well up in the recording booth? Because I would super struggle. I didn't hear that line until we were in the theater. No. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't hear that line until, until I saw the movie. But um, I thought that that was really powerful. I mean, there's so many moments in here, man, that's like, it's, it resonates on a human level, you know? It resonates on a human level. Even just going back to the first film for a second, um, when Miles' dad says, uh, say I love you back. I love you. I love you, Dad. You know, like... You gotta say I love you back. Dad, are you serious? I want to hear it. You want to hear I me say I love you, Dad. You're dropping me off out of school? I love you, Dad. Look at this place. Dad, I love you. Dad, I love you. That's a copy.
I think I think there's so many human things in this in in these films that just that's why it resonates the way it does. So even looking at the mom, you know, say something like that, like that's that's so that's so important, you know. It it just does things for like Miles is able to navigate when things get tough because he knows what feels right. Maybe I'm overstating it here, but I like to think people have watched this first movie and the new one and they'll walk out and want to be better parents and better kids. That's that's how I see it, as well as it being an amazing adventure and the music being incredible and you're going into other universes and all that stuff. I think at its core, that's what I like to think the movies are doing. That's right. Same. That's the end of, <laughs> that's the end of my essay. That wasn't a question. I just said something very nice. That's, that's where Thank we're you. at. Thank I'll you so much. I'll leave you with this one last thought, which is, as we've got very geeky today, the artwork for these movies, the posters and the frames, the stills, the cells within the actual movies. Outrageous. Do you have any prints or posters up in your homes off the back of this movie? I was driving around LA and I, I saw a new like still that I hadn't seen. I was telling you about it. I was like, whatever that is, I got to figure that one out because that needs to be <laughs> framed and displayed somewhere. It is, you're right. The artwork is, yeah. is just Insane. perfection. Yeah. I love the idea of you having, you know, dinner around your house and you go, oh yeah, no, I'd forgotten you were in Spider-Verse. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Pretty cool. Oh, but let me Pretty remind cool. you. Yes. <laughs> oh, this old thing? Yeah, what yeah. else? <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you both so much. As you thank may you. have guessed, I love the movie. I love the movies. Um, have a great rest of your press tour and I'll see you for the next one next year. Thank you see so you much. Time. Hope so. Good to see you. Bye, you guys. Lots of love. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my Radio 1 movies and TV podcast screen time on BBC Sounds. And you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum.